we're hearing shifting language coming from the president and the White House overall regarding how quickly the economy might be able to come back online. Uh, earlier today, the president was tweeting about this, saying that uh, we can do two things together. The cure cannot be worse by far than the problem. Congress must act now. We will come back strong. We're still waiting to see if Congress will act now uh, later on today. But I want to bring in Rick Newman for more on the shift in the president's thinking here. Uh, Rick, it does sound like he's pushing for a quicker return uh, and shift away from these lockdown policies we're seeing more and more uh, coming from governors across the country. Uh, now more than about 10 states in, in lockdown mode, or at least announced lockdown mode as those come into place. But what's the give and take when we're thinking about the take, uh, the hit to the economy overall as more businesses are, are shutting down and, and people are staying at home? You can practically see President Trump pulling his, uh, his uh, orange hair out as he just watches the stock market uh, tank and all the terrible economic news that's coming in. And we've get, we're getting terrible forecasts. We don't even know how bad the layoffs are gonna be and the decline in GDP. So you're hearing Trump, and this is circulating in conservative uh, circles at this point. Uh, let's get the economy back to work. Maybe we're gonna end up hurting more people with all of these stay at home orders uh, than we're gonna be helping by telling everybody to stay at home. Um, you know, I think we all kind of get the idea that you have to be able to take some risks in an economy, but frankly, I think this idea is going nowhere. Uh, and there's one big thing that is missing from uh, this theory of President Trump's. We need massive widespread testing for coronavirus. We need everybody to be able to be tested. That's the only way you can know um, who is safe, who does not have this virus and is therefore safe to move around and who does have it and needs to be quarantined. Right now, in the states you're talking about where these uh, stay at home orders are in effect, the basic ass assumption is everybody has it. Everybody is potentially a spreader because we can't tell who is and who is not a spreader. So, you know, we can get widespread tests. I mean, we have tests and we are ramping up here in the United States, but we have been woefully behind on testing. And right now we need a moonshot for testing. Testing is the thing that is going to enable us to start getting back to regular economic activity. Uh, you know, Trump is trying to let the private uh, sector handle this. Uh, the private sector will get to it. It's just going to take time. So if the government can do anything here, figure out a way, no matter what it takes, to do more testing so we can figure out who can move around and who cannot move around. Right now, we just are saying nobody move around at all. Yeah, I mean, when we look at the numbers, too, 25,000, uh, more than 25,000 in New York State and a, a lot right now in New York City alone has more than 14,000 cases approaching 15,000 uh, when we look at it. Uh, so there is all that going on. Uh, you know, it's 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 different across state lines when we think about how many uh, cases have been mounting there. And I think part of that is because New York State has been leading the way when we think about testing. So obviously they're going to have uh, more numbers actually reported here. But the rate isn't slowing down either. And we hear uh, Governor Cuomo talk about this, saying that the rate of new infections has been doubling every three days. Uh, that could be a function of just getting testing back online as well. But he says the apex isn't going to hit for another 14 to 21 days in terms of the stresses placed on the on the health system here, too. So I don't know how you could have people going back and traveling again uh, when there is that playing out uh, in hospitals around the country. And I'll tell you, there's also an urban rural divide here. I mean, I've been writing about this and I've been getting a lot of lots of emails back from people saying you're exaggerating it. It's we have, don't even have any cases here. Uh, you know, Mar Mario Cuomo, the New York governor, said today, basically, if you think you don't have any cases, you're going to have cases. We are an example here in New York of what's coming your way. I know in the medical community here in the New York City area, uh, doctors assume that the actual infection rate is probably 10 times what the reported infection rate is. That's just because of all the people who may be asymptomatic and cannot get tests and so forth. Um, and this, is, this spreads exponentially. I mean, we know that by now. So everybody who characterizes this as, oh, it's just like the flu, um, it's not just like the flu because the infectiousness of it is uh, considerably greater than for the regular flu. That means if you're one person who has it, you're gonna, in, you're gonna infect more people than you would if you had the flu. Um, so, and that just leads to these exponential spikes in cases. So, uh, you know, the, the breaking point here in any locality, in any municipality is the healthcare system. And no governor or mayor is going to do what President Trump apparently wants, which is to say, okay, we encourage people to go back out again if, they, if that person knows that they're going to run out of ICU beds and they're going to run out of ventilators. So President Trump, Trump if he gets to the point where he actually does this, 
um, he can try all he wants to encourage people to go back uh, to go back out and you know reopen restaurants and go to movies and things like that. Uh, governors and mayors are not going to have it if they see that increasing the risk to the health care system in their uh, in their area. All right, Rick Newman bringing us that. Hey, investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up-to-the-minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day, wherever you are.